Hey everyone, this is Cody coming to you from my Dark Sky Bortle 1 location. And today I'm going to be reviewing the latest strain wave gear mount on the market. This is the ZWO AM5. Now I just wanted to apologize for the length of time between the unboxing video and the posting of this review. Uh, there's two main reasons for it. The first reason is we've had significant water damage to our home this summer. So we spent about $25,000, ripped out the floors, the vanity, had to rip up the front yard. It's been an absolute nightmare and it's taken most of my time. Now I don't say this for pity's sake, but it has been such a time commitment that it hasn't left much time for anything else. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is I don't like to review products after only having them for like a week or two. To me, that's influencing and I'm not an influencer. My goal is not to convince you to buy something. It's basically to share my experiences so you can make a more informed decision yourself. So that's another reason why I didn't make a review right away is I wanted to spend a few months with the AM5, find all the nooks and crannies, maybe have some tips and tricks to share with you and really just give you my experiences with the mount. Now for the sake of transparency, a Gina Astro did send me this mount to review. However, there are no strings attached. You know me, I bring you unbiased reviews. So if there are strings attached, I don't accept the product and I won't review it. So that said, I'm free to say whatever I'd like today, uh, what's great about the AM5, maybe things that I think should be improved. But I just wanted to uh, uh, let you know that a Gina did send this to me and I wanted to thank them for doing that. They're definitely my favorite astronomy vendor by far. I love their in-stock indicator. I love if something's back ordered, they'll show you the expected date that it's supposed to arrive. Hardly anyone does anything like that. And I also don't get flooded with marketing emails from Agena Astro. So just an awesome company with great customer service. So again, thanks for sending me uh, this mount. And now let's go ahead and dive into the review and talk about the AM5. Now, as I mentioned in the unboxing video, I found the machining quality on the ZWO AM5 to be excellent. The uh, dies that were used to cut the bolts must have been very precise, as well as the taps that they used to thread the holes because everything just is very, very smooth on the AM5. And that makes polar alignment extremely easy because you have such smooth adjustments that polar aligning becomes a breeze. And to be honest, with this kind of quality of machining, you actually get a more accurate polar alignment as well because you can really dial in the fine adjustments. Now I'm just gonna get this out of the way and say it right from the get-go that I think the hand controller definitely needs some work. At first I thought it was really cool, you know, like, oh, it looks like a Nintendo controller or something like that, but there's like little functionality whatsoever in the hand controller. Um, the main thing that I use it for is to, uh, move the telescope to the zenith to take flats. So that's pretty much all that I use the hand controller for. Uh, other than that, I honestly find it kind of useless and it just stays in the box most of the time. So if there's one area that could definitely be improved right from the get-go, it'd be making a lot more functional hand controller, which is what I'm used to. <laughs> well, the sun is really beating on me, so I'm gonna hide under the optical tube here and get some shade. Uh, but I think the question inevitably will come up is do you need to use counterweights in the counterweight shaft when using the AM5? Well, the remarkable thing about the AM5 is it has a 13 kilogram payload capacity without any counterweights, and it has a 20 kilogram payload capacity with counterweights, which is over 40 pounds. That's pretty amazing given that this mount itself is 5.5 kilograms or basically 12 pounds. So the AM5 really checks two main boxes for me. Number one, it's very portable because it only weighs 12 pounds. But number two, it can hold up to 40 pounds and it's not a big deal for me to just stick a counterweight in my car when I go to a dark sky site. So I would say that's a big plus in the AM5 or even just strain wave gear in general as they're able to carry a lot of weight for their size. So let's talk about the guiding performance of this harmonic mount. Now, at long focal length with an off-axis guider, you can have some challenging nights out. That's just a given. So some nights have worked absolutely amazing. Some nights have been a little bit more of a struggle finding a guide star that sort of thing but the mount itself guides fantastically my average error in rms is usually about 0.8 to 0.9 
So I'm getting really good guiding results, really nice sharp stars, even through a long focal length system like this Celestron 9 and a quarter inch Edge HD setup. And that's with a big heavy metal Celestron dew shield on the front too. So I'm really pushing the weight capacity here and the AM5 handles it like nothing. So uh, the Rasa, I've gone ahead and thrown that on here too. And I would say that the ZW AM5 and the Celestron Rasa 8 are like a match made in heaven. It balances out so well the guiding at that 400 milliliters of focal length. If you, you know, just use like a normal guide scope or something like that, the guiding is simple. You just set it up and it's basically plug and play. Um, imaging with the Rasa and the AM5 is incredibly easy. Now that's another point I wanna make though, is ZWO really only recommends imaging with this up to 900 millimeters of focal length. So I'm really kind of pushing the AM5 to its limits here, but on this sturdier tripod, it really handles it without any issues because of that extra carrying capacity you get when you're using these harmonic drive type mounts. It handles it like nothing and imaging has become a lot more simple for me using a long focal length setup like this. So uh, I guess what I'm just trying to say is you could be using uh, lower focal length scopes like ZWO recommends, or if you have a nice stable tripod, you can still use these heavier scopes at longer focal lengths and get really good results. And just to drive this point home, on several evenings of using the AM5, I've been taking screenshots and doing little video recordings of the guiding performance I'm getting through this, through this setup I have here. And you can just see how stable that is. And that makes it really nice for an imager to be able to like go to bed or go do something else and not have to worry about checking your guiding every second. Now one nice thing about the ZWO AM5 is each one of these will come with a AM5 periodic error test report. And that's going to show you a graph of the full periodic error in arc seconds over a 360 degree displacement, as well as a partial zoom of your maximum periodic error. So just a small portion of this graph. The best part though, is it's going to show you the maximum periodic error of your mount and the minimum periodic error of the mount. Now, I feel like I won the luck of the draw here because my maximum periodic error is 12.4 arc seconds and the minimum periodic error is 8.1 arc seconds. So there's hardly any periodic error whatsoever in this mount. So I feel lucky in that, in that regard. But yeah, if you decide on, on purchasing an AM5, you can expect to see a periodic error test report, which is just nice to see for each mount. Now a huge benefit for those that do a lot of urban observing is how quiet the AM5 mount is. Check this out. It's dead quiet, by far the quietest mount that I have. So that's a huge plus right there. Now that the rain has come and gone, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you the saddle on the AM5. It uses a compression fit, so it's gonna give you a nice secure connection from your telescope to the mount without marring up your dovetails at all. And it also has space for the uh, Vixen style uh, rails as well as the larger Los Mandy style rails as well. So everything you want in a saddle, uh, the AM5 pretty much has it there. And uh, hopefully this is becoming more of a standard in the industry where you have the compression fit and the dual style saddle. Now, if you're a big fan of the ZWO ecosystem, you're really going to like the AM5 because it integrates into that ecosystem very seamlessly. The ASI Air app, the guide scope, the camera, electronic focuser, filter wheel, all that stuff just communicates so nicely in the ASI Air app. You're not gonna have to worry about, you know, meridian flips or recalibration of guiding or anything like that. It all behaves very nicely and everything communicates nicely. But I also feel like that can kind of be a con as well. I'm starting to feel like astronomy is tending to go more towards the route of Apple, where everything is kind of designed to work within its own ecosystem and keep customers in that ecosystem. So again, if you're a big fan of the ZWO ecosystem, this will work really awesome. If you like things to kind of 
if you like to pair different products together, um, it'll probably work fine. You just might have some hiccups while drivers and stuff like that get updated with time. So again, you could consider that a pro that this all works so well together, but it's also kind of a con because the industry is starting to move that direction a little bit as well. Now a concern with mounts that have used strain wave gears in the past has been if you experience a sudden power loss, is all your equipment going to tip over because you have nothing to counterbalance it? Now with the ZWO AM5, they included a right ascension braking lock in the design so you don't have to worry about that. So let me turn this on here. There we go. And just uh, demonstrate this real quick. So we're moving in right ascension. Sudden power loss. Everything's just fine. It's locked up and you don't have to worry about it, which is really nice. So just to conclude this review, I thought it would be prudent to summarize kind of everything that I discussed today. The mount itself only weighs 12 pounds, which is quite impressive for how much weight it's capable of holding, up to 40 pounds with a counterweight. That to me is where most of the value in the AM5 lies. I can still bring my big Schmidt Cassegrain tubes with me down to dark sky sites without packing really heavy mounts. I just have this little mount in its nice case. I can pick it up and put it in my car put in a, a counterweight as well, and I'm off to the races. That said, the guiding performance is also exceptional. I'm almost under one second error every single night and getting really sharp stars, which, which is awesome. I've even had things down to 0 0.5 seconds of error, which is, or arc seconds of error, which is even more impressive, honestly. That said, I would recommend getting a, a decent tripod for the AM5 if you're going to be using it with a longer focal length setup. Otherwise, the carbon fiber tripod works great and it's also very lightweight and portable. The hand controller could use some work, but overall, the mount is exceptionally quiet, which helps make up for a little bit. I haven't talked about this at all, but I feel like the logo is a little bit childish. No offense to whoever created it. I think this look here is just nice and clean and is what ZWO should have gone with. Fortunately, I was one of the ones that received a plate that didn't have a logo on it. Um, but that's just aesthetic, aesthetics, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. You have a nice saddle that's not going to mar up your telescopes or anything like that. So overall, the AM5 is a exceptional mount. The harmonic drive gears, or the strain wave gears I should say, provide zero backlash and a really smooth experience and are capable of carrying all that weight. So I guess the real question is overall, am I going to buy it? because that's like the the guiding question right and i think i am going to buy it i just need a little bit of time to save up some money from all the water damage to my house so it'd be really hard for me to part with this now especially with all the nice images that i've taken through it so overall i think the uh, zwo am5 is a awesome new uh, strain wave gear mount and i can see a lot of potential in it after using it for a few months i've really run into no problems with it using the zwo ecosystem so anyway I hope that you found this video helpful. Thanks again to Agena Astro for providing the mount today. Hope you have a great day and clear skies. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to help support this channel, please consider making your astronomy related purchases through my Agena Astro affiliate link in the description below. It won't cost you anything extra and you'll get that awesome Agena Astro service with your purchase. However, I'll also get a little bit of kickback from that to help me support this channel and all the informational videos that I make. It really does help. That said, if you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. I appreciate you being here regardless. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video today and clear skies. First of all, sorry about the delays in content recently. Uh, our house is literally ripped apart on the flooring aspect and the kitchen. Um, so yeah, that's been a big delay. Uh, you can see it's not been pleasant. Uh, so hopefully here soon, I can get back to, uh, to posting a little bit more regularly. Now, because my house is such a disaster right now, we're actually heading out of town. So I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to show you just how portable the AM5 mount is with the carbon fiber tripod. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and remove my power cable and my USB cable from my ASIR Pro and the mount. Okay. 
and those just pop off. And then I'm gonna remove the ASIR Pro and set that aside. And then what you wanna do is make sure that the altitude on your mount is set to zero degrees so it fits in the case, so I've already done that. So now I'm basically just gonna take the entire thing and put it in here. Okay. Just like that. And that's pretty much all the cords I'm bringing. I've got just these standard cables. I'm gonna bring my power cord, my ASI Air Pro, uh, my Red Cat 51 setup, and this carbon fiber tripod. So pretty much no weight involved in really any of this. Now you could probably fit the tripod parts for the AM5 in the case as well, but I just like to leave them in here so I don't ding anything up. And then literally I just collapse these legs real quick. Snaps together here. And I'm ready to go. So this is literally all I'm taking on my trip. My monochrome Red Cat 51 imaging setup, my AM5 in the hard case, the tripod, and a power cable, and that's it. So it's very, very portable. And the really cool part is the AM5 can hold so much weight that it allows you to take a Schmidt Cassegrain or like a Rasa or even a refractor with you and still maintain that same portability.